Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. We're going to do another video on a PDW product, Prometheus Design Works. Now, if you watched the video I made just a couple of weeks ago on the uh, Invictus Automatic, uh, you'll know that uh, I do like this style a lot. I like the the classic nature of this particular design. Now, you're actually getting a bit of a leg up here over the automatic. The automatic is a full production knife, even though they're limited and numbered. It comes off basically off of an assembly line. They do all the the, the hand finishing and, and uh, putting the final edge on by hand and all that kind of good stuff. But what I have in my hand here is the uh, PDW Invictus Alpha Semi Custom. Now, here's the thing. They call it a semi-custom however it really is more of a custom and I'll tell you why in a second um, this is actually made by Jeremy Robertson of Calavera Cutlery and those of you that have been to enough knife shows like the blade show and whatnot they've had a chance to meet Jeremy uh, handle some of his knives the El Patron the Model 4 you know the great level of quality that he makes his custom knives at well Here's why I don't want to call this a semi-custom. Because Jeremy has stated uh, on his Instagram as he was first talking about this knife that he has made these knives 100% himself in-house. So that really makes these a custom. Now at the price that PDW is selling these for at $659, that's less than Jeremy's customs. So that really, in my opinion, makes this a steal as long as you like the design. Very military design, very practical EDC design. You've got a uh, three and a half inch CTS XHP stone wash blade, 6AL4V titanium for the contoured frames, for the back spacer, and on the uh, sculpted 3D clip. Yes, no cheap spring clip. Yay! We like to see that, especially in this mid-tech price range. You know, if you were buying a custom knife for $800 plus, uh, you'd still sometimes get a spring clip from some makers. So it's nice to see that that extra work has gone into this. Uh, let's see, overall length, 8.125 inches, and you've got about three and a quarter inches of cutting edge because you've got this choil right up here. Useful jimping all the way around the knife. Again, it's it's made to be used, it's made to be comfortable. This is an EDC knife. This is really for that guy that maybe you're not a knife collector, maybe you just need one really great knife to carry every single day. You're not rotating through, you're not changing out your knife uh, every single day. You just want that one knife that kind of does everything. It's slim, it's easy to carry in the pocket, it's large enough to uh, handle any real tasks that you throw at it, but it's compact enough for easy carry in pants and shorts, trousers, whatever you're wearing. And it's something that you don't ever have to worry about. It's always going to do its job and not be cumbersome when you're carrying it through the day. And this design really is very, very, very good for that. Uh, it is a U.S. patented design for the Invictus, so PDW has the, uh, the U.S. patent for this particular design. Yes, it looks very familiar, and again, I'll address this like I did when we did this video. Uh, Patrick Ma, who owns uh, Prometheus Design Works, is a, a pretty celebrated knife designer, and he has made signature designs. It, when you look at his designs, you go, oh, that was designed by Patrick. Very, very simple and easy. Uh, he has uh, some very telltale signs. And he did design a knife for his previous employer who still manufactures that design. So this is very, very similar to a knife that you'll find by another outdoors outfitter, similar to PDW. So I don't want you to get confused and go, well, this, you know, one is ripping off the other. No, it's just, it's the same guy that designed them, but now he has gone off and made his own company to create his own products. And I do like the price points that Patrick has selected for his knives. He's uh, pretty reasonable about what he's doing. So let's get back to this. 
if this were, let's just say this were a Jeremy Robertson full custom, number one, it would be nearly impossible to get because you can't just pick up the phone and get on Jeremy's books. If you go to a big knife show, uh, you're probably going to get a chance to get into a lottery and get one and get one at a decent price. Otherwise, you're going to go through a dealer or you're going to go to the secondary market. So figure a knife like this is going to be probably in the range of $800 plus depending on how in demand that particular knife may be from him. So at, you know, 650 bucks or 659 if we want to be specific, uh, I feel it's a really good price point for a custom made titanium frame lock in today's market. Sure, can you go out and buy a zero tolerance or another production knife and spend a lot less money? Yes, but there's nothing really particularly special about that. And when we're buying custom knives, we're doing it, uh, number one, because it is special. It is handmade. It is professionally heat treated. It is hand ground to prevent any issues with that heat treat and that blade going soft in the end, which we see quite often with production knives. Uh, there are uh, hand done details and uh, special care taken to every knife that's not necessarily going to be taken on a production knife. You're also buying into something that is uh, it's always going to be exclusive. You know, because that one guy working in his shop can only make so many knives per year. So it's always going to be more limited. You've also got, and let me just close this up to show this, you have a fully contoured titanium frame. And according to PDW, that takes five times longer than just doing a slab-sided titanium frame. A lot of companies would just do a flat-sided frame, maybe a chamfered edge around the outside, and call it a day. This is nicely contoured, fits well in the hand. The finishing work on this is also really nice because you've got that matte, matte bead blasted finish, and it's left in that raw state. So they didn't go and tumble it afterwards to get a smoother finish. So what you've got is a natural tactility to it. So it's going to stick in the hand a little bit better because of that slightly rougher. I don't know if you can quite hear this. Let me put this over the microphone. I don't know if that's going to play up or not. Hopefully you'll hear that. But you, you have that rough finish against your hands and it does keep it nice and solid right where you want it to be. So let's take a quick look up close. Start with the blade. Good clean stone wash. I would have preferred to see a two-tone here. I would have liked to have seen satin flats on this, um, especially in this price point. That's just me. It's a personal thing, uh, but a, it's a good working finish, obviously. That very pronounced swedge going all the way down. It's about three quarters and then down to the tip. There is the PDW logo. Nice pronounced thumb stud, ambidextrous thumb stud, so you can open this left or right handed. As you've seen me do, it flicks out very, very nicely and very easily. Uh, there's <clears throat> a little bit of a uh, wedge cut right off of there. Gives you a little bit more of a, a three-dimensional look, and you can really see the contouring um, as it matches up to that. Here is nice little cutaway so that you can access the thumb stud a little bit more easily. You don't want to bang your finger into the uh, blade like I just did though. Nice clean pivot design, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Simple torques on the other side. And there are the milled lines which again give you a little bit more grip, that's what they're there for. Plus they look pretty cool. And there's that, uh, that bullet shaped butt end see how nicely done this backspacer is it's nice and flush here and then where it gets jimped he brings a ramp up and then leaves it a little bit raised so that jimping actually grabs into your hand very very nicely done there you have a post here made for your lanyard so instead of having a big gaping hole in your frame if you don't choose to use a lanyard you're not uh, interrupting the flow and the lines of the design uh, if you do want to use a lanyard, you just pop it right through there. There is that 3D sculpted titanium clip. really like how this finish shows up when the, uh, the light hits it. Very, very, very nice. 
nice long fuller in the blade something that could be important to uh, many of you right there made in the USA it's actually made in California there's one thing I don't like about this knife and it's not gonna bother most people and as you see uh, it does not hinder the performance in any way. It's still uh, very smooth, very fast. It's on phosphor bronze washers instead of bearings. I would want bearings for the speed, the ease of use, and the smoothness. However, uh, if you really are going to be rough on this knife, some people do prefer to have washers. They feel that it's more secure and a, uh, a stronger pivot than having bearings and that's fine that's a personal opinion I've yet to see anybody break a knife because it had bearings as opposed to a, uh, a washer system everybody's different you're gonna have your own opinion and that's great uh, but uh, it is nice and smooth uh, it reminds me a little bit of a Sebenza it's not quite as smooth as a Sebenza um, you've got a little bit more lock bar tension here than on a Sebenza and I believe the pivot might be a little bit tighter too so you definitely feel that and as we go to open it's got a really strong detent by the way which is why I prefer to flick it uh, but if you do go to manually open it I'm being extra careful because I don't want my finger to hit that fucking blade again there is a smoothness to it but again uh, just because of how how well that thumb stud is made it really works well for the flicking. Uh, you've got a bit of an incline on the thumb ramp there. The jimping is okay. If you really push into it, you can lock into it well. Otherwise, it feels pretty smooth. So, well done on the jimping. It could be just a teeny tad sharper for my liking, uh, but it's certainly going to be useful. And that's a good thing. A little bit about Jeremy. Um, he started making knives in 2008. Uh, he was actually an airline pilot. I can't imagine anybody giving up that career. The money that those guys make uh, is pretty friggin' awesome. But he, uh, he decided in 2010 to quit flying and making knives full time. So that's, that's a big risk for anybody to quit any job and go into knife making because you're, you're, you're never going to get rich being a knife maker. I mean, just, that's just the way it is. There are a few rock stars in, in this genre, in this industry, but uh, aside from really a couple of people, don't ever think you're going to get rich making knives. It's really about the passion for making knives. As far as the name Calavera Cutlery, uh, the name is Spanish for skull. And Jeremy on his website says there's an extinct volcano in Carlsbad, where he is, uh, that was on his ancestor's ranch that the uh, Mexican cowboys called the Calavera. So it's known today as Calavera Hills. So that's where the name of his company comes from, for those that have been curious and have been uh, too fucking lazy to go look at his website. It's really not that hard, guys. Uh, Google is your friend. So uh, what do I give this as far as an overall gotta have it or not gotta have it? I'm going to say this, and this is something I don't know that I've ever said before in my entire life. I think I kind of prefer the production knife. I like the custom. It's really nicely made. But the aluminum frame on the automatic is lighter weight. I personally like the smoother texture. Um, again, I'm not a hard user. If you're a hard user, you will definitely appreciate the rougher texture. Um, I like the glow-in-the-dark button. I like the fact that it's automatic. I don't do a lot of automatics. I think only maybe a fifth of my entire collection uh, of knives is automatic. Definitely prefer the pocket clip on the custom on the frame lock um, the blade is I mean when you look at these side by side it's 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 the same knife but you could definitely see take let's see if we can get a nice good look at just the blades here without me putting shadows on it you could definitely see the prominence of the hand grind on this custom versus this production knife and for that, I give the edge to this one. But there's a significant price difference. And if you're only price shopping, you're probably going to go for the automatic as long as you live in a state where it's allowed to be carried. Um, for everyone else, 
you're not missing out on anything by having the frame lock it's just a little bit heavier uh, it's got a little bit more of a basic look to it basic finish if you get into the automatic you can get what I, I, I chose the Arctic Grey for, for myself I liked it there was black there was uh, OD green so you have some choices there here you don't however it's really easy to anodize titanium I mean really easy you could do it yourself and watch videos on how to do it on YouTube otherwise you probably know somebody that does anodizing if you're in the knife community so you can always jazz it up a little bit how cool would that look in like a midnight blue you know or uh, maybe like a rich rich green remember the anno color is going to look better on a satin or a polished finish than on this rougher finish but it's still going to look badass so the way I look at it is this I have a particular fondness for the automatic if I had never seen the automatic and it never existed I would tell you hundred percent you you really need to experience this knife because it does all the things that the automatic does great it's slim it's easy to carry it's a really really good fit in the hand it's a great size it's got a useful blade profile all the things that the automatic is the automatic is just a little bit more lightweight and I like the action I like having the automatic if this were a flipper and or this had say ceramic bearings and a ceramic detent I don't I don't know that I could say the same thing I think I would be so completely enamored with this for my personal taste again I know plenty of guys that do not like flippers plenty of guys that do not want bearings in there around their pivots so I really am speaking just from the heart and, and as a, you know my personal preferences as a collector if you just want to judge this based on is it a quality knife hell yeah this is a really really well-made knife Jeremy does amazing work I've had the chance to meet him a couple of times uh, talk to him about his knives at a, at a couple of various shows and <clears throat> of the knives that he's made that I've handled I've been very very impressed so realize that when you're buying this and you go to PDW's website and you read that says alpha semi custom I want you to think back and go well if Jeremy says he made the whole thing and he did it himself in his own shop he didn't farm anything out that makes it a custom and to get a custom titanium frame lock in CTS XHP for six hundred and fifty nine dollars that by itself makes it worth owning now when these are gone and done there were only a few made I don't remember how many but there were very 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 few of these made when they're gone there's a very good chance the value is gonna go up tremendously and you're gonna be really pissed that you didn't get one for yourself so while they're available I would say shit yeah if this design appeals to you then absolutely do it I think it's a great great knife great deal um, I, I, I just think I'm gonna be carrying the automatic a little bit more often and if you feel the same way save a couple hundred bucks you know they're not as limited and you can't call them custom but if that doesn't matter to you save a couple of bucks and do the automatic I think either way you go you have a tremendous EDC knife you have a knife that may retire other knives in your collection if you're a fan of the Sabenza in particular you are really gonna love this frame lock version it is equal in my opinion in the overall quality I think the execution uh, may be a little bit better you're definitely getting a better lockup because you know for whatever reason Sabenzas have that famous really super late lockup here nice solid lockup um, I would have really liked to have seen a steel lock bar insert uh, but not everybody's doing that yet but I really have no fear of that uh, moving over and it has absolutely no stick whatsoever none I mean it is buttery buttery smooth 
I think this would be a fantastic option if you've got a friend that's looking at a Sebenza but doesn't mind spending a couple hundred more. This is certainly a lot more limited. Um, it is a true custom, whereas the Sebenza is a production knife. I think it's a great way to go. You know what? Let me put it side by side. Let me grab my Sebenza because I think this might be a little tiny bit bigger. Hold on one second. Oh my goodness. And I have everything piled up on that case, of course. It's okay, I just dropped a $3,000 knife on the glass. Alright, but it was important, I think, to get this comparison here. Wow, they are virtually identical. The uh, Sebenza, just a teeny touch longer in the overall length. Sebenza does feel a bit smoother than this finish. Again, we'll take a look at the uh, the lockup differences here. Yeah, see what I mean? Now, I've had this for a long time. I bought this in 2009, so it's a, it's a, it's a rather old Sebenza. Um, but let's get these pivot to pivot. That's about even right. Yeah, the blade length is a little bit longer on the Sebenza. So if you've got somebody that, uh, that, that appreciates the Sebenza and they want something a bit more custom, holy shit, man, that's a great way to go. And I hadn't even thought about that before I started the video, obviously, or I would have had the uh, fucking Sebenza out to do that. You know what? Let's do this, too. Let's... Ooh... Yeah, definitely a lot more flickability on this. It's easier to thumb this open slowly because uh, Chris Reeve has never really used a hard detent. So it's not like you're having to pop it and then the blade pops out here and then your thumb falls off and then you hit the blade. And that's what I tend to do with this. So if you're a manual, slow manual opener, this Benz is probably a better choice. If you want fast into action and nice quick flick, that's going to be your choice right there. All right, guys, with that, I am out of here. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.